ora, I'm Hira, and welcome to my kitchen. I love to cook, and I love to eat good food. Oh man, if only you could taste this. Cooking for me is all about farming. All my siblings cook putai fritters, and everybody has that secret recipe. But as a mum, when life gets crazy busy, all I want is delicious kai that's simple and easy to make. I'm about to demystify and uncomplicate cooking. Recreating restaurant quality dishes right from my kitchen. I'm all about Hedda's hard and fast recipes. The prep is nice and easy. And just like that, the girls would never know that I only took five minutes to put this together. Because simple doesn't have to mean boring. Wrong. This is Easy Eats. Slow cooked succulent beef cheek ragu. This is a hearty dish, definitely one to share. The most delicious recipe for creamy mushrooms I've ever tried. Today, it's breakfast at Hedda's. Keeping to the breakfast theme, porridge. Who doesn't love it? Definitely how Grandpa makes it. Ah, hei haka kōpa a seafood platter fit for a king. Game over. You are in for a treat today. I'm going to share with you a recipe that is so special and has so much meaning to me, beef cheeks ragu. Why is it special? It was the one meat or protein option that I chose for my wedding. Why? Because my husband and I absolutely love this dish. Beef cheeks ragu with papadale pasta. He kaireka, hei hakamahana ia koe te wā o te hōtoke, tēnā, hakamātauria. So we're going to start by searing off our uh, onions and vegetables. Now the thing with beef cheeks is that they're quite a tough meat and that's purely because, you know, the cow, if you can imagine them chewing all day, so they're, they're always working. So this is a great way to cook your beef cheeks and make them nice and tender. So to my hot pan goes my oil. So I've already prepped my veggies, nice and simple, nothing too difficult. In goes my onion and garlic. Cooking these veggies will create the initial flavour base for our dish. The beauty about this dish is that you literally just add everything into this pan, put the lid on and just let it cook. We all like those sort of dishes. We just want to cook it through enough so that the onions are lovely and translucent, not fully cooked. All right, to that, we're going to add our beautiful beef cheeks. And all we're doing is searing these off. Searing meat is 100% about building flavour. When that meat hits a scorching hot pan, the surface instantly begins caramelising and releasing flavour. My mother always said to me, when you cook with love, your pie will come out tasting beautiful. And this particular dish, oh my God, I love it already. So while that's still searing, we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. We're gonna add some tomato paste, some canned tomatoes, some white water, And lastly, some herbs. Traditionally, rosemary, but you can chuck in anything that you have lying around in the garden. Add in some thyme too. Just gonna give that a quick stir. Now, we don't always have time, so if you have mahi or things to do, errands to run, what you can also do is chuck this all into a crock pot, put it on medium and let it cook all day. But today, what I'm going to do is put the lid on, put it on low and let it cook for six to eight hours. Our meat has been cooking away for about five hours and is so tender. Let's start preparing our pasta. Sometimes the beautiful thick papadelli pasta is hard to find. So a quick hack I like to do is buy fresh lasagna sheets and cut to size. And wait for it to boil before adding your pasta. This is the result of a beautiful slow cook. The pasta is ready, our beef cheeks are tender, they pull apart, and we're ready to serve it up. Ah, 
a hearty pasta for a hearty beef cheek. You can smell the garlic, the herbs, the meat is so tender. This is definitely one of my favourite meals. Ki nakitia ki te parihi me te tihi parmesan. And there you have it, love on a plate. Beef cheeks with papadelli pasta. Wow, this is a hearty dish. Definitely one to share, and I can't wait to dig into it. The beef is pull apart tender. It is delicious, those tomatoes and all the herbs. You can definitely taste them. They're so pronounced in that clay. It is delicious. No wonder my husband wanted to marry me. Make sure any leftovers have cooled down before covering and popping them in the fridge. E haere ake nei, breakfast. The ultimate creamy mushrooms and porridge. Two ways, both equally delicious and both great ways to start the day. Today I'm going to be making creamy mushrooms on a sourdough toast. Now we all love a great creamy mushroom recipe. You can have it for breakfast, lunch and even dinner. So today we're going to zhuzh it up, we're going to add in a few more ingredients and you will always be remembered for the best creamy mushrooms on toast. All right, let's get started. Obviously, the hero of the dish, mushrooms. So we're just gonna cut them different shapes, different sizes, and we're just gonna get in there. Let's make magic happen. This is the part where your kitchen starts smelling delicious. If the windows are open, the neighbours can smell it and they'll be knocking on your door. Let's preheat this. Let's get it going. We don't want it too hot. You want to make sure that it's at a beautiful temperature so that that butter mounts and that that garlic just infuses that butter, spreads out all of its flavours. There's nothing better than the smell of garlic and butter. Totally coat all your mushrooms with the butter. Get it in there. Oh, I could have a piece of bread right now and just... Yum. This is my weakness. We're going to add some salt. Always some for the dish. Some over the shoulder for good luck. You can never go wrong. Mmm, that sizzle sound. Beautiful. All right. And we go with pesto. And pesto has beautiful oils as well that adds to all this flavour. We've got some balsamic vinegar. Great acidity. And some sweet Thai chilli sauce. Now, the next secret ingredient, amongst many of the secret ingredients in this particular dish, one cannot have mushrooms without some wine. And you're going for about a quarter of a cup of white wine. That's plenty. Got to have enough for me later. So what we want to do is cook out the alcohol. We're going to put the lid on and let that simmer for about 10 minutes. While that's simmering away, I'm going to head over to the stove and we're going to toast our beautiful sourdough. Add oil and toast over heat. Flip occasionally to ensure the bread is evenly toasted. So the toast is done. We're going to check on our mushrooms. We're going to add some cream and start thickening it up. And then we're almost ready. That is looking great. In goes the cream. 
We're going to let that simmer for about three minutes and then I'm going to thicken it up with a little bit of corn flour and then we're good to go. As you can see, the mushrooms have really retained their shape and that's exactly what we want. But I can tell you, they've also infused all that flavour. This is going to be good. All right, I think we're going to start thickening this up. Now, this process will happen really, really fast. And then it's happy time. Happy time to eat. Add a little corn flour to thicken the mushroom sauce. So the thing about corn flour is that you really, really want to mix it in well because it can sometimes form lumps. Mix it well so it goes through because you want your sauce to be creamy. Now don't forget to always taste as you go because how many times have you been to a cafe or a restaurant and all you want to do is add salt? I have this theory that every time I cook kai, you should never have to add any seasoning because I like to make it perfect. Mmm. Damn, that is good. Yeehaw. These creamy mushrooms, they look out the gate. They are ready to be served and I'm ready to get into it. The plating for this is super simple. Just pile the mushrooms on top of that sourdough. All right, and just to make me feel better, I'm gonna add some beautiful herbs to finish it off. Adds that freshness, adds that little bit of color. And there you have it, gourmet creamy mushrooms on beautiful sourdough toast. Well, the saying goes breakfast at Tiffany's, but today it's breakfast at Hedda's. Let's get into it. Those mushrooms are cooked to perfection. Wow. These flavours are great. That sourdough that toast is really, really crunchy. And the thickness of it, the best part about it, it's soaking up all those flavours, all those juices. Mmm. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and tea. Well, if this isn't gourmet cooking in your kitchen, I don't know what is. Creamy mushrooms on sourdough toast. Today, I'm going to be making porridge. And I know what you're thinking. Something so simple, but let me tell you, there is technique to this. Every New Zealand kid has been brought up on porridge. I'm going to teach you how to make the most delicious, creamy porridge. Right, let's get cooking. I'm gonna turn our stove on. Now the thing with porridge, some people soak their oats, don't even bother. Chuck them in. You're going to add half boiling water. Make sure it's boiling because this does make a difference. And then half milk. This is what's gonna make it yummy and creamy. Now you must always continuously stir your porridge so it doesn't stick to the bottom. And cannot forget your pinch of salt. So I'm over the shoulder for good luck. And I'm just gonna stir that. Now I'm pretty sure everybody's had that pa or marae porridge where it's looked gray and gluggy. That's purely because it's just been made with water. But porridge, oh. Such a simple ingredient can be made so delicious. So at Noho, or Kapaka Wananga, you always have to have that pot of porridge. And I am the person that will make the porridge. Why? Because it just stops all the fighting. I don't have to moan. I can wake up happy and I've got my beautiful creamy porridge. So if you ever come to one of our Noho, you will definitely see porridge on the menu for breakfast. All right, that's done. We're gonna take it over to the bench, dress it up. I'm going to show you two ways of how you can eat your porridge. 
Porridge is ready, my puku is rumbling. Let's plate this up, because I want to get eating. I'm going to do it two ways. We've got the gourmet version and the pa version. So let's start with the gourmet one. My handy dandy mug. Beautiful and creamy. We're just gonna go in with some simple ingredients. We've got almonds, some dried fruit, chia seeds, other type of seeds, just go hard. That one's done, and my favourite version, the good old butter, brown sugar and cream. So you're probably wondering why I'm adding butter. This was the only way Grandpa would serve it to us. One reason, well, if you didn't have cream, the butter helps to make it more creamier, but it was always butter, brown sugar and cream. Don't be shy on that butter. It's already starting to mount. And lastly, cream. I like to do it on the edges so I can scoop the butter and the brown sugar and get the perfect spoonful of porridge. And there you have it, creamy porridge, header styles. This is a great way to start your day. Beautiful bowl of creamy porridge. I'm hungry, let's get into it. Mm. Yep, taste the butter, the cream and the brown sugar. With that porridge, yum. Definitely how Grandpa makes it. If by Akene, a seafood platter fit for a king. I am excited about this next dish. This is what I live for. I'm going to be making smoked crayfish. I'm going to show you how to infuse your crayfish with beautiful flavours, get that smokiness all the way through it, and it's going to be accompanied with other kaimoana and presented to you on a platter. So before we get into the crayfish, we're going to make a basting sauce. It's quick, it's easy, it's my go-to. Let's get into it. So we've got some mounted butter, garlic, Sweet Thai chilli, some brown sugar. Now the brown sugar will actually help this stick to your coda. You definitely want it in that tail part. And lastly, some coriander. We're just going to bring that all together and then it's done. All right, we're gonna cook this crayfish. Now, there is a skill to cooking perfect crayfish. And this method, thanks to my husband, works every time. You can overcook crayfish, and you know it's overcooked, it's when it's fluffy and quite floury in texture, and you know when it's undercooked, because it's still a little bit see-through and very stringy. But this way is the best. So, you have a deep dish, and it's with cold water. Lots of people add crayfish to boiling water. Do not add boiling water cold water. Now if you've ever cooked crayfish and it's still alive, this part is when the tail starts flapping and oh, just be careful, be very, very careful. You're going to turn the stove on 
wait for the water to boil. Once it's boiled, turn it off, take the crayfish out, and it's done. And that's how you make the perfect crayfish. So what I've done is that I took out the boiling water, hung my coda by its tail, and what that does is that it allows all the water to run through the body into the pot so that there's not much moisture left in your coda. So the tip and trick to cutting a coda is by placing it on its back and you're going to put the knife through the belly, slice it down so that it opens up and butterflies perfectly. Well, that is perfectly cooked, I can tell, just by touching it. I can tell it's not floury, so it's not overcooked. Let's baste it and get it out to the smoker. This is a great addition, or just a different way of being able to do your coda. And the reason why I've cooked it before I've put it in the smoker is that the smoker is purely just there to infuse the coda, to add that smoky flavour. But I have done it from raw on a smoker. But just know the shells will turn a little bit brown. Your legs and arms may not be as juicy as normal because it literally sucks all the moisture out, but the flavours will still be amazing. And there you have it, smoke time. Leave in the smoker for around 10 to 15 minutes. Make sure you continue to baste your crayfish during this time. Mmm, that crayfish is beautifully smoked. So now I'm going to assemble a beautiful platter. So as I'm going through making this platter, I'm just going to build up a little bit of height with some of our kai moana, just to sit our coda up. Make sure all the seafood has been chilling in the fridge. This is definitely the star of our dish. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some crackers and some cheese and just go hard. Always have to have a blue cheese on a platter. Some camembert. Just going to add some cherry tomatoes. Let's go on with some dips. Got some beautiful roasted beetroot dip. Right, got some pesto dip. Nothing beats making your own, but when you're pressed for time like me, make sure you buy dips that add colour and flavour to your platter. Let's go in with some crackers. Different shapes of crackers also help to zhuzh up this platter. The key to a good platter is filling every empty space on your board. These ones are great because they add so much height. Add some feta. Let's go in with some more dip. Can't go wrong with the good old French sticks. And it's just finding space for them now. Cut up some lemon. Lemons are great to go on any seafood, and especially with oysters. And there you have it, the star, the hero, smoked crayfish on a beautifully presented platter. It's time to feed the whanau. Well, I am in my happy place. Seafood, kaimoana, let's get it. Mm, 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 mm. Party in my mouth. Tell ya.
one Northland girl must have a teal. Mm. I know it's a sharing platter. I really don't want to share. Maple garlic, sweet Thai chilli, coriander, perfect match. Game over. I am done. Join me again for more quick and easy recipes for your whānau to enjoy. Enohora. E